Deion Sanders talks about the best story in football, his. Who's the best coach in college football? Let me see a mirror so I can look at it. The season premiere of 60 Minutes Sunday. Cleaning up after a wild round of weather that brought everything from flooding to destructive winds. As soon as I started to see trees start swaying violently and limbs drop, I immediately hit the brakes. One man's terrifying encounter with a possible tornado. Beware of toppling trees after heavy rain left the ground saturated. Could it be a recipe for disaster ahead of a very windy weekend? Plus, a standing ovation as a Hartford police officer seriously hurt in a crash is released from the hospital. Now on Channel 3 and streaming on WFSB+. This is Eyewitness News at 11. First up right now at 11 o'clock, a 1-2 powerful punch of storms that brought flooding and even a possible tornado. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight for Eyewitness News here at 11 o'clock. I'm Mark Sinney. And I'm Stephanie Simone. Two rounds of storms turned roads into rivers, took down trees, too. Chief Meteorologist Mark Dixon standing by with more and on the latest with Hurricane Lee. Mark. Yeah, Mark, Stephanie. Uh, the National Weather Service out of Boston, they'll be in Wyndham County tomorrow morning to survey the damage from what they're calling a likely tornado that developed just before crossing the border and moving into uh, Rhode Island. Uh, tonight here in the 11 o'clock hour, no weather alerts in effect for any part of Connecticut. A check of first alert live radar. Outside of a couple of spotty lingering showers, we are starting to uh, dry out. Uh, the front pushing through southern New England, taking the heavy rain and the severe weather threat with it. For the bus stop tomorrow, we'll wake up the temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s, uh, pardon me, upper 50s and low 60s. By the afternoon, reach the uh, mid-70s. It's going to be be a dry day, a bright day, and one that also features noticeably lower humidity. It is 11 o'clock. That means we have the latest information from the National Hurricane Center holding uh, at Category 2 strength, sustained winds at 105 miles an hour. It is currently positioned about 345 miles to the south-southwest of Bermuda, about 920 miles south of Nantucket. Uh, by Friday morning, it's going to be on the approach to southern New England, and here's the latest track, very similar to prior tracks. Uh, the center of the storm staying offshore as it heads up toward Nova Scotia. So we have hurricane watches in place for the coast of Maine, tropical storm watches in effect as close as coastal Rhode Island. And here's a look at the uh, the wind field forecast as we head into Saturday afternoon and evening. The tropical storm force winds staying offshore from us. We could see some stronger gusts here in Connecticut. Our first alert for fringe effects for Saturday. We'll see increasing chances for showers across eastern Connecticut. We'll time those out with First Alert Futurecast and talk more about those wind gusts ahead in the First Alert 7 day. Mark, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. Our team coverage continues right now. The storm tore right through northeastern Connecticut where a tornado warning was in effect earlier. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Hector Molina reports from Killingly at the center of all of it. Severe winds caused a path of destruction in the state's quiet corner late Wednesday afternoon. South Killing's fire chief tells me about 25 trees were knocked down by this storm. You could see the remnants of one of them behind me here on Shippy Schoolhouse Road. It was the result of what was a very severe storm that went through this area in a very short period of time. The video on your screen is from Austin Ravello's dash cam. He's a storm chaser with the National Weather Service who found himself right in the middle of the storm. All of a sudden, the wind really picked up. All the trees started swaying, and then limbs started dropping down from the trees. He was almost too close. As soon as I started to see the trees start swaying violently and limbs dropped, I immediately hit the brakes, and I was getting ready to floor it backwards if I had to. But says it all happened in a matter of seconds. Killingly's fire chief says the storm closed three roads but didn't cause any injuries or structural damage. However, it did cause power outages to several homes including Oscar Teshjardins on Shippy Schoolhouse Road. He got home from work just after the storm passed through. My wife called me frantic. I got home and the tree was down across the yard and across the street and the wires were on the ground. Similar to many Killingly roads, the storm's path crossed state lines into Rhode Island. Foster Rhode Island's highway director says weather wasn't the only factor in trees falling in both Foster and Killingly. We have a lot of mature trees now that are starting to uh, reach their life cycle. And I've actually seen stuff like this on a, on a sunny day where a tree like this will come down and take the wires down. Eversource crews expect outages to be restored by tomorrow morning. In Killingly, Hector Molina, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.
And the other big story today, all that rain. It caused lots of flooding in many communities, including here in Bristol. Drivers had to be rescued after becoming stranded on Middle Street. There was so much rain, the road was turned into a lake. And today is coupled with days of heavy rain, which means the ground very soggy right now. And that could spell trouble with Hurricane Lee on the way. Channel 3's Bryant Reed spoke with experts about the safety concerns with that. Bryant. Yeah, Stephanie, as you know, we'll be dealing with some fringe effects from Hurricane Lee, and that could uh, mean some heavy wind gusts coming our way. Now, with that, especially with the uh, saturated ground from all the heavy rain we've been getting, that could mean dealing with a lot of fallen trees. Wednesday's heavy rain and flooding in Connecticut has communities planning for strong wind gusts that could lead to trouble this weekend. The concern we have is strong winds, anything over 35 miles an hour, we know is going to be a problem. And two, because it's still early in the fall, there's still a lot of leaves on the trees, that's going to lead to power outages. It's going to lead to limbs or trees coming down. Gusts are expected to be around 30 to 45 miles per hour. Chris Riley with Norwich Public Utilities says they're watching weather closely. He says they'll have utility crews stationed around the area and will have extra workers on hand to deal with any problems. Riley also has advice for any residents in the storm's way. A downed wire is potentially a lethal hazard to consider it something that could kill you and make sure you report it to 911 as quickly as possible. The car tank is filled. Make sure you have cash on hand. If you're going to charge any of your devices uh, ahead of the storm, if you need to recharge them in your car, make sure you do it when your car is not in a garage. Another concern going into inclement weekend weather are downed trees on roadways. Tom Worthley is a forest management specialist and talks about this concern. The ground is so saturated. We've had so much rain um, in places where the soil is shallow and the trees are overcrowded. Um, we might have a um, an issue with easier uprooting than usual. And what can be done in the future to prevent it? Over the long term, outside forests can be managed to be more storm resistant. It's a matter of identifying the trees we want to grow and giving them space. And experts say if you just happen to come by any down power lines, stay away from them as much as possible until the power company can come and clean up the mess. In Rocky Hill tonight, Brian Freed, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Take a look at this right here. Some other news for you tonight. Hartford police officer Brian Kearney, who was seriously hurt in a crash one week ago, has now been released from the hospital. Fellow officers, hospital staff, and family members all gathered earlier this afternoon to cheer him on as he was brought out of the hospital. We certainly wish him the best. Now, meanwhile, tonight, it was all about honoring the life of Detective Bobby Garten as well, who died in that crash. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Eliza Krasinski was at a vigil right outside Hartford Police. He was an amazing person. The city in mourning. Hartford Police Detective Bobby Garkin, an eight-year veteran of the force, was killed in a car crash responding to a call last week. They want to go home. No, they want to come to work and they want to go home. And unfortunately, this officer is never going to be going home. Now, the memorial outside of his police headquarters only growing larger. You can't even see the car anymore. Outpouring of love and support from the community at a vigil Wednesday night as people gather to remember Detective Garten. He always sat there with a huge smile on his face. He was a unique person and a unique cop. And um, when we say, like, he exemplified everything that um, I would, as a chief, would want to see in my cops, that's real. Those who knew him say he was simply the best. Just always, like, there. He always um, took care of all of it. I don't, there's not like anything that sticks out because every single time I saw him, it was like the best time. We always had the best time. There was just, just never one time. Officer Brian Kearney was injured in the crash last week and was released from St. Francis Hospital Wednesday afternoon. Well, I talked to him a couple days ago and he was, uh, he, he was focused on two things. One, making sure that we were taking care of of his, his brothers and sisters here at the police department and the family, uh, and two, getting well enough to go to the funeral. The wake for Detective Garten is Friday, and the funeral is Saturday. More details on that over on the Channel 3 app. In Hartford, Eliza Krasinski, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.
And in Cromwell, we are learning the death of a child along Route 9 has now been ruled suspicious, and police are searching for eyewitnesses who saw anything in this case. Police were initially called to the scene of a crash by exit 25 Monday night. At some point, the driver and her two-year-old little girl walked away from the scene down toward the Connecticut River. The woman was found two hours later alone. The toddler was found along the riverbank and pronounced dead at the hospital. We've learned both are from Cromwell. If you have any information, please call state police. New tonight at 11, we're learning new details about a scare at Mystic River Magnet School in Groton. School officials say a young student was walking around the hall with a butter knife. This happened last Friday, but a report was just released this afternoon. It's still unclear tonight if the student was trying to harm anyone, but in the end, no one was hurt and the knife was confiscated. And new tonight, North Haven police arrested a man accused of going on a rampage in a shopping plaza. Look at this here. Part of the incident caught on video. Police say a driver rammed into the front of a store right off of Universal Drive last month and sped away. Nobody was hurt, but police have arrested this man, 24-year-old Adam Marin. He's charged with reckless driving and fleeing the scene. Still ahead right here tonight, an escaped killer finally captured. The dramatic end to a two-week manhunt in Pennsylvania. Stubborn inflation still rising, but it's not all bad news, where Americans are finally seeing some relief. And stranded at sea tonight, why it could be days before passengers on this luxury ocean liner are rescued north, near the North Pole. With Chevy Silverado and Silverado HD, you can take on the mountains, or you can move them. With the power of up to 36,000 pounds of max available towing and the confidence of an available 13.4-inch diagonal touchscreen, whatever your mountain, there's a Silverado for you. Get 0% financing, plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all Silverado 1500 pickups. Plus, get 750 cash allowance on this Silverado. Visit your Connecticut Chevy dealer. You know, in healthcare, as we replaced computers, we had thousands of PCs. And I said, these could really be used for helping people. We're doing PC repair. The computers come from Hartford Healthcare, and we get to repurpose these computers. 150 Hartford seniors and college students will be eligible to get a free laptop. You know, it takes that one person to help change your trajectory, and I hope that I and Hartford Healthcare are helping other kids. That's what it's all about. This fall, fly away with Great Day. You can win four tickets anywhere a Velo Airlines flies. Watch Great Day at 3 for the getaway clue and enter on WFSB.com. We'll announce our next qualifier tomorrow at 4 on Eyewitness News. A moment with Ernie Bach Jr. and his family. Oh, look at that. Hold on, everybody. Let's work together. The voyage isn't always easy, but when the crew pulls together, it's smoother sailing. The seven-day forecast is sponsored by NJM. No jingles or mascots, just great insurance. Eyewitness News, covering more exclusive stories in West Hartford. Emmy-nominated Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Do you know that feeling when you're laughing and crying at the same time? Weeknights on CBS. An escaped killer's time on the run and came to a dramatic end as police took Danello Cavalcanti into custody today. A search plane with a thermal imaging camera tracked the fugitive. Teams on the ground then surrounded him and they moved in with search dogs. They had the element of surprise. Cavalcante did not realize he was surrounded until that had occurred. That did not stop him from trying to escape. He began to crawl through thick underbrush, taking his rifle with him as he went. A police dog actually stopped him after biting his head. Cavalcante escaped from the Chester County Jail in southeastern Pennsylvania on August 31st after scaling a wall encircled by razor wire.
More than 5,000 people are dead in Libya tonight after a massive storm hit coastal communities, but that number could actually more than triple. Bodies lined streets waiting to be identified, and morgues are just overwhelmed. Over the weekend, a wide section of northern Libya was flooded, causing dams to burst and populated areas to go underwater. President Biden is pledging support for the Libyan people. New government data shows the inflation rate continues to climb. Gas and oil prices were a big reason why. Overall, inflation rose 3.7% in August, a jump from July and June. Since March of last year, the Federal Reserve's been raising interest rates to bring inflation down. The board meets again next week and is expected to hit the pause button. It is unlikely that the Fed's going to raise interest rates next week. The reason being that they are seeing inflation come down at that core level, and they probably can wait until the following meeting to determine whether or not to raise rates again. One place that Americans are seeing improvement is the grocery store. A lot of items actually dropping. Milk down 3.5% from a year ago. Bacon has dropped more than 6%, and eggs have plummeted 18%. Frontier moving its headquarters from Norwalk to Dallas, Texas. Frontier said it chose Lone Star State because it will be easier for the company to manage its national operations out of. Frontier did not offer a timeline on the move, but says it will continue to maintain a strong presence in Connecticut. Cancer experts are demanding action to end an ongoing drug shortage. They're calling for lawmakers to increase funding for cancer research. A brand new report highlights recent improvements that the U.S. has made in reducing cancer deaths and advancing treatment, but it also brought up concerns about the challenges of an ongoing shortage of chemo medications and future funding of cancer research. A luxury cruise ship carrying 206 people stuck in Greenland right now, and it could be days before they are rescued. The ship ran aground on Monday while touring the National Park, and it's just been stuck ever since. The nearest rescue vessel will not arrive until Friday morning. We're told all the crew and passengers are safe on board. All right, of course, we had some severe weather in Connecticut today that uh, possible likely tornado in Lich and pardon me in Wyndham County, but something we've all had to deal with over the past several days, just copi copious amounts of rain. This is a, a, a graphic, a map of the radar estimated totals of rain since Friday. And especially across interior portions of the state, we see some of those brighter purples and even some blues and blacks showing up. That's where we've seen upwards of five to nine inches of rain with locally higher amounts. That's why we saw widespread areas of flash flooding today. That is all basically over outside of a couple lingering showers. Our ICANN view from Hartford still showing some cloud cover. Uh, not the best visibility, but things will be improving as the night progresses as drier air begins moving in behind a cold front. Our view from New Haven currently 69 in the Elm City and primarily cloudy. Uh, so dew point values right in line with the temps right now. We're in the upper 60s to near 70. Uh, first alert live radar outside of a little downpour over Milford right now showing that uh, things are certainly much quieter than they were earlier. Any of these lingering showers in association with this front uh, will be winding down and that uh, drier, cooler air will be arriving. So here's a check of Futurecast dew point values. They will be transitioning from the 60s into the 50s as we head toward daybreak. Tomorrow from the 50s into the 40s we go. So we dry out. It's going to feel quite nice. A good amount of sunshine. Temperatures stop out in the low 70s in the Northwest Hills, mid 70s elsewhere inland and also along the 95 quarter. Okay, so our next Next first alert, our attention shifting, of course, to Hurricane Lee. Uh, winds holding steady at 105 miles an hour. That is a Category 2 storm. Uh, it's going to be passing just to the west of Bermuda, doing so, going as a Category 2, eventually up to a Category 1. And as it passes by to our east, going from uh, Category 1 status to a tropical storm as it heads up toward Nova Scotia. Uh, so it's uh, 9 o'clock on Saturday morning, likely due east of us here in in Connecticut will be getting some of the fringe effects from the storm as the storm center stays to our east and offshore. So here's a check of Futurecast uh, Thursday showing a clear sky that evening. But as we head toward daybreak Friday, we'll start to see some of those high level cirrus clouds overspread southern New England. So filtering the sun a bit on Friday morning, those clouds lower and thicken as we head toward Friday evening. We will end the week on a dry note and the wind will start to increase a bit out of the northeast. Uh, do note the western extent of that rain shield on Friday evening 
gets into the Cape and Islands and perhaps even as far west as eastern Connecticut by early Saturday morning. Then as Saturday moves forward in time, uh, the, the storm begins lifting away. So uh, the rain reaching eastern Connecticut, it is a fairly uniform here on all the different models that we look at, the European, the American, certainly close, uh, best chances for rain favor the eastern part of our state. That's also where we're going to likely see some of the strongest wind gusts. The wind will be ramping up Friday night into Saturday morning. So Saturday morning, wind gusts 25 to 35 miles an hour. By Saturday afternoon, we could see some wind gusts between, say, 35 and 45 miles an hour. As we head into Saturday night, those winds will start to decrease in intensity. So for Friday, again, as we break this down for you, clouds increase, becoming breezy. Saturday, best chance for rain eastern Connecticut, elsewhere, and across the state, wind gusts 35, 45 miles an hour. If the storm were to shift a little bit to the west, we could see a bit of an uptick in those winds and as well a higher likelihood uh, for some heavier rain. But that does not appear to be the case as of now. But we do have that first alert for Saturday, uh, given that we could see some isolated sporadic power outages. As uh, Bryant mentioned earlier, the root systems of our trees fairly compromised, given how much rain we've had over the past several days. So it won't take much wind for some of those to topple over. Uh, Sunday, increasing sunshine, upper 70s. Uh, Monday, mainly dry day, maybe an isolated shower. Otherwise, next week, overnight lows in the 50s, afternoon highs in the mid-70s. Looking pretty good, Mark. Indeed. Thank you. Very, yeah, once we get past Saturday. Still ahead for you right here tonight. Keeping it all in the family. This is great. How a father and son's love for flying landed them with a, an amazing photo op. And it's been an exciting few weeks as kids come back to class. And we are sharing your first eight pictures. Eli, so sweet, enjoying <laughs> his time in second grade so far. And Sky Liana kicked off first grade with a big smile as well. Check that out right there. Mm -hmm. Looking great. It was her first day of school as well. And you can send us your photos on the Channel 3 app to see yourself on TV. Keeping you ahead of severe weather, it's the most important thing we do. That's why we're doubling down on our commitment to you with something you won't see anywhere else. First Alert Weather. It's our promise to alert you as far in advance as possible, whether it's minutes, hours, or even days. Simply put, when we know, you'll know. So you have more time to plan, prepare, and keep your family safe. Our small state sees big shifts in the weather. This is why we first alert. Connecting you to quicker routes so you can stress less on the road. Watch Pinpoint Traffic on Eyewitness News, sponsored by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. You are more. You're more than just your car accident. More than just property damage. And more than just medical bills. You are so much more than what the insurance company says you're worth. So do something about it. Get Carter. And when you get Carter, we'll help you get more. We are Carter Mario. When hurt in an accident, you need to get Carter. Call 800-900-6700. Seriously, aliens live in Stonehenge. Says the guy who pays for cable internet with slower uploads. Frontier Fiber's got equal speeds. Come on, that's crazy talk. Believe in change. Uncable yourself, and for a limited time, get Fiber 500 internet for $39.99 a month. Did we just get hustled? There's no way they were 70. Interesting. Hmm. It's both an electric and a gas car. Yeah. Quite the paradox. Hmm. 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 Mm. So JJ's for lunch? Hmm. Electric for short trips, gas for long. It really is both. The first ever Lexus RX plug-in hybrid. Eyewitness News, covering more exclusive stories in West Hartford. Channel 3, a proud partner of Yukon Athletics. Well, this is some good news. Air travel will likely be cheaper this fall than it was over the summertime. A new report from the travel app Hopper shows prices are already down for early autumn. Plus, the time from September through October is just cheaper in general. And the Federal Reserve predicts the post-pandemic travel surge is now winding down. All those factors have airlines decreasing travel prices. Domestic trips are down 29% in September and October. We'll also take a look at this. As a toddler, a young 
young boy posed with his pilot dad in an airplane. And nearly 30 years later, he's posing with his pilot dad again, but this time as the co-pilot on the flight. How That's neat. great. I love it. Ruben Flowers says it was his dream to fly with his dad, who is about to retire, and thanks to a brief overlap in their careers, father and son were able to fly together again. Oh, I love it. They were able to recreate that iconic photo on a flight from Omaha, Nebraska to Chicago. Very cool. All right, game one for the Sun and Minnesota Lynx. That was played tonight, and we've got the first start of the season for a UConn quarterback. What's the deal? Well, you're going to want to know. about a brand new 2023 Subaru Solterra, the only EV with Subaru safety and capability. Buy with 0.9% financing or lease for just $3.99 per month. Don't miss the Subaru of New England, a lot to love event. This September, join us for Connecticut Cleanup. Find your Connecticut retailer for details. Good Speed Musicals presents a bold new musical, The Twelve. Jerusalem, the disciples are in hiding. Their teacher has been crucified. What will they do? Their choice will change, change the, the world. world. Now playing at the Good Speed in East Haddam. Goodspeed.org. <laughs> from ShopRite is now in your phone on Instacart. Get free delivery on your first order. Select new Volvo models. Contact your Volvo retailer to learn more. It's not just a game, it's your family and friends, the rivalries, and the roar of the crowds. Channel 3's Friday Night Football, sponsored by Yukon Health, Orthopedics, and Sports Medicine. Stay big and sleep better with a new mattress from Raymore and Flanagan. Get matched with the right mattress for you from our huge selection of top brands and save up to $400 off Purple, 33% off Nectar, or a $200 MasterCard reward card when you purchase a Tempur-Pedic. Or get the bed of your dreams for as little as $15 per month with no interest. Our mattresses are in stock and ready for free delivery tomorrow. Get your best rest with the right mattress for you only from Raymore and Flanagan. Dustin Lynch, live in concert. I was just thinking about that weekend. Saturday, October 14th, 8 p.m., Premier Theater at Foxwoods Resort Casino. The biggest party of 2023 with country superstar Dustin Lynch. On sale now at foxwoods.com and ticketmaster.com. Dustin Lynch. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F-Series trucks to help save the day, stretch the weekend, haul or tow just about anything, anywhere. That's because they're built Ford tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are in stock in America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. As part of Truck Month, get an F-150 or Lightning with 3.9% financing for 60 months plus 1500 Channel 3 Eyewitness Sports. It is playoff time in the WNBA. The Connecticut Sun beginning a best of three first round series tonight at home against Minnesota Sun with that home court advantage. And they may need it because this matchup all season long during the regular part of the year with the Lynx has been pretty tight and tough. This one, though, the Sun start out burning up the nets early. Alyssa Thomas, Deanna Bonnet, you know, they got a special connection. It's like they're married. Well, one day they will be very soon in fact the sun up early minnesota will rally the second quarter grabbing the lead on this bucket by bridget carlton 
Now it's time to cue the Connecticut run. Tiffany Hayes, the former UConn star, a hot hand from the outside. She had three threes in the first half. And just before the end of the half, coming off the screen, it's Rebecca Allen, 46-32, Sunneth break. Second half, well, the UConn women's team enjoying it, watching all the fun for the Sun, who wind up taking game one 90-60. First time uh, they ever had a 30-point win in playoff postseason history. And right now, joining us live, Channel 3's Uka Sonia. He saw the entire thing courtside, and, and there he is to prove it. What do you say, Uka? Well, Mark, the scoreboard's come down and the floor's coming up behind me because there's a concert tomorrow night. But here in game one of the playoffs, the Connecticut Sun making some sweet music of its own. A big win over Minnesota. But here are three big numbers that really display just how well Connecticut did. They had five scores in double figures, led by Dewana Bonner, 17 points. They also got two double-doubles, one from D.B., and the other from Alyssa Thomas. But here's another one. 16 threes made by the Sun, a playoff record at a 53% clip. Insane. But the Sun after the game saying that defense is what paved the way for their big night on offense. I think we harped on uh, focusing on our defense to create offense. Uh, having everything come together by this time in playoffs. So I think this is one of our best complete games, and it kind of showed, honestly. Yeah, I think it's really great when you look at the, the score sheet and you see so many people in double figures, and that's, that goes credit to the way that we moved the ball and we, we found the right shots, and it, it sort of it really helps with the offense. It opens things up. We moved the ball really well, 28 assists on 33 made field goals. I mean, that's, that's just terrific. I just felt like we made the right plays. We made the right reads. We didn't try to, to do it ourselves. We didn't over-penetrate. We didn't overanalyze. Well, at the best of three series, which means they can sweep it with a win on Sunday. Tip off at 1 p.m. From Mohegan Sun Arena, Unqua Sonia, Channel 3, Eyewitness Sports. Mark, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Unqua. Season ago, Taekwon Roberson was the UConn starting quarterback. Suffered a knee injury in the season opener at Utah State, out for the year. And then he came back, was beaten out for the starting job this summer by Joe Fugnano. But he suffered a season-ending injury Saturday at Georgia State, so now Taekwon is back as the Husky starter. So he's in a difficult situation with the team 0-2, but he knows and he has shown in the, in the past. He's got plenty of perseverance. It was tough uh, in, in, in every aspect that you just named, you know. Uh, obviously getting hurt in the second possession uh, last year in the first game and then, you know, working my way back uh, to be with the guys. Um, not winning the job in camp, but like I said before, um, it's just, you know, just a never, never give up mentality, mentality. And it's like I said, it's just, it's always going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. You just got to reach. All right. The game of the week is going to be Holy Cross at Naugatuck Friday on WFSB plus. All right. There we go. It's exciting, Mark. Thank you yeah. very much. And thank you for joining us tonight for Eyewitness News here at 11. That's right. Have a great night, everyone.